Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to share with you how easy it is to connect two tables using Power Query to perform something that you might be used to with a VLOOKUP or an XLOOKUP. So here I've got an orders table. This is basically each transaction is equals a row. I've got some SKU data here. However, my manager and my team wants to be able to see the actual product name next to this row here. And so over on the side, we've got a SKU table here and we'll have the SKU looked up and then presented any of these columns here. It can present us with that. So first off, I need to create a couple of tables. I've already done that and I've named it SKU and orders. But if you didn't have a table ahead of time, you would just go to the insert tab and create a table to get that going. Okay. The second step is we need to load these two queries as connections only to the Power Query. To do that, we go to the Data tab, and we're in the table. We just click Get in Transform Data. Now, keep in mind, your products and orders and SKU tables might come from an outside source. Totally fine. For this purpose here, I'm just starting within Excel table. Okay. All right. So looking good, I'm gonna load the orders table, then I'm just gonna close and load two. And there's a little tiny button here, only create a connection. If you forgot to do this step, then what would happen is this orders table is gonna go back into Excel um, as another query. It would spit out another uh, worksheet. So I'm just trying to keep it simple and not have two of these at the same time, okay? Similarly on the SKUs, I'm just gonna go up, create another connection only. Okay, perfect. Over on the right, we have the queries and connections tab. We'll see that the connections only, and really the power is the ability to hit refresh. On a, on a regular basis, we have the ability to refresh and then any new orders that come in will be generated in the, the reports that we're gonna go out. Okay, so let's go into the qu query now. I can get there, so right click, edit. I can get in there a couple other ways too as well, but I'm back in the query editor. I've got my two tables, and now we're going to essentially try to do a VLOOKUP or an XLOOKUP, even though it's not called that, but we're gonna join two tables, and here's how we do it, okay? so. First off, select the table that you want to add on to it. So I'm on, I'm on my orders table that will help us out here. And we we can see our SKUs here. So we're going to um, you know combine the SKU from the SKU table and bring in the product name next to it. Okay. So over on the side, you've got home. We've got merge queries. We'd like to do it as a new query. All right, now this is interesting. This just takes a little getting used to, but essentially what we need to do is select your first table and then the second table that we're gonna connect it to. And these are the two tables off the side we've already connected our connections to. Then, not intuitive at all, not intuitive at all, but you have to click on the, the two fields. You need to make them green. What are the two fields that are in each table? So in our case, the SKU, IDs are in both tables, right? And what will happen after that is we see that we have left outer join. There's a lot of different types of joins. If you're into databases, you might know a little bit about that, but typically the most popular method is the left outer join. Kind of works like a VLOOKUP. It's gonna go out and look up for each row. It's gonna present, it's gonna look up the SKUs here and report back any of these here. So unlike a VLOOKUP, we can get multiple columns all in one shot, which is kind of neat, okay? So I then hit okay, and then what will happen is notice that we have a th third query right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just name that right off the bat. I'm just gonna call that um, combined tables, okay? Now, another part that's not intuitive is this 
skew here, right here. And we'll see that when we, I did not mean to click on that. Um, let me X out of here. Yeah, I just X out the steps there. I meant to just click on the word table here. And I wanted to show you how you can see, okay, this for example, AO122.110. That's the Azena Outdoor Planner. And that shows everything. Oh, did, not, did not mean to click on that. Keep it. There we go. It's sensitive when you when you click here. Uh, all right, I'm just gonna stop clicking there. Trust trust me that this table shows you a preview of it. However, the real work is done with this little guy here, um, and so. I want you guys to see this. I'm going to really zoom in here. I want you to see this right here. That's super important because when you click that, it's a table expander. And what it will do is it will give us the ability to show one or more fields from it that's useful to you. So remember, our whole goal, so I'm clicking on our whole goal was to show the name just like that. And if I wanted to bring in anything else, I could. So maybe I'll bring in um, uh, what might be helpful here. Maybe purchase description as well. Okay. So name, purchase description. I don't recommend using column name as prefix because then it gets redundant and you see the name twice. And then I'm going to click OK. All right. So you're probably like me thinking, what's going on with these two right here? It says null. So that would mean that it did not find that skew there. So it's kind of like, you know, in a VLOOKUP, if it doesn't find a match, it, it can give you an error. That, so that's what's going on with that record right there. So we'll, we'll worry about that later and we'll import a new skew and see how to refresh the, re the re record here. Okay. Um, so now it's just a matter of doing a little tidy up and cleaning up here. So I want my I want to change the order date and make that just the date. I don't need all those times in there. Do, do, do. I can make total currency. And, and if I'm happy with this, then I can go ahead and export it out. And this time I will do the close and load too as a table and that will bring in a table right there for that combined table. So so we could not see this right here. James Taylor bought uh, this right here. Well, let's go to the SKU and I've got it here. So what I'm gonna do is gonna copy that and I'm just gonna put it right here. Okay, my table did not, oh, I was not in the right place. Okay, one second here. Just slide that in there. There we go. Okay. Looks good. So now I'll go back to the combined tables and I'll hit refresh all. Yeah. Awesome. So there it is right there. Okay. Now we're not done yet. Wait, there's more. One of my favorite things to do is if you needed to create multiple worksheets for spe specific filtered out products, here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna go back into the query. I just double click, I'm back in there. And check this out. I have the ability to right click and I have two options. Duplicate would essentially just copy it where reference would copy it, but it it creates a link so that if any changes were made here, it's going to update and cascade down. So reference is what I'll choose. And now I can go over to the side and let's imagine that um, we really want to see like three or four of these. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to select the uh, rock fountain, hit OK, and then I should name it. Okay, then I'll go back to my combined tables. I'll right click again. I'm gonna do like three or four of these here, real quick here. Let me go ahead and 
filter that out. Name it and tuck it. Okay, you can s the power I want you to be thinking about this is I will have these worksheets automatically created each time we go into Power Query to edit this. So it'll save us a lot of time. And let's go ahead and do sprinkler pipes. Okay, now I'm just realizing that our purchase descriptions here are not that useful, right? So let's go in and let's go back to combined tables here and um, take a look at how we can, remember how we chose the field? So I'm gonna come back to the expanded SKU here, hit the little little gear icon here, okay? And I'm, I no longer want purchase description anymore. Let's say instead we would like to know um, the inventory asset account. Okay, then okay. Okay, um, so I see it came in here all right and I'm just realizing actually hold on one sec here purchase description no it's okay it's okay I just I had it was it came in a different order so it kind of threw me off there okay well if we go back to rock mountain okay yeah it's all there looking good Looking good. And lastly, what if we wanted to trim up this just a little bit? We would. We actually have the ability to like rearrange. I can drag and drop. So if I want to drag this right there, that might be more useful, I think. Let's do that. Let's get these in the right position. Lastly, there's choose columns. So on the sprinkler pipes, let's just say that our manager only needs to see only a handful, like the uh, order date, customer name, and uh, yeah, how about that? Okay, just to show you that you can easily get, get back into it as well and show what you want here as well for that. That's choose columns. Okay, okay I'm gonna. Close and load two. All right, now the magic is done here because you can see down below we got sprinkler pipes, Nantucket Outdoor, Rock Fountain, and everything is coming off this combined tables. This is like the master combined tables, which is pulling in from the SKU and the orders here. So there we have it. How to connect two tables into one, like a VLOOKUP or an XLOOKUP and then do more work off of that by splitting out and getting yourself into a position of, of combining and reporting off those queries there into new tables. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you on the next video.